Good evening. Welcome to the special broadcast on the parliamentary elections on DD India, the great Indian elections. This is the ultimate election year as globally more voters than ever in the history will head to the polls. On the show today, we take a look at why does Maharashtra matter in the 2024 elections. Well, Maharashtra, the western state of India, sends 48 members of parliament or MPs to parliament and is the second highest after Uttar Pradesh. The realignment of regional satraps and the political bloc for the 2024 elections makes one wonder if it would be better to call it Maha Chaos for the voters. The financial and entertainment capital of India will go to polls in five phases from April 19th to May 20th. The fortunes of the national parties and regional ones merging makes Maharashtra a cracker of an election. DD India dissects why Maharashtra matters in the great Indian elections. Located along the western coastline of India, the state of Maharashtra is a maritime, commercial and a vibrant cultural hub that includes the UNESCO World Heritage Sites like the ancient Ajanta and Ellora Caves. Spread over an area of over 300,000 square kilometres, the state, which is blessed with a 720-kilometre coastline, caters to most of India's maritime trade activities. It is also a major automobile hub and has a rich industrial output ranging from heavy machinery, consumer durables as well as FMCG products. Its state capital Mumbai, which is well known for its rich architecture, including the iconic gateway of India, is also well known for the glitz and glamour of the Indian cine world, the Bollywood. Maharashtra, a state important in multiple aspects, houses 48 Lok Sabha, the lower house seats in the Indian parliament, the second highest in the country after Uttar Pradesh, that has 80. In the 2024 general elections, the state is going to polls in five phases starting from April 19th to May 20th. That is April 19th, April 26th, May 7th, May 13th and May 20th. The state has 92 million registered voters, out of which over 47 million are men, 44 million are women, while more than 5,500 belong to the third gender. Now coming to Maharashtra's current political scenario, it is governed by the Shiv Sena Shinde Party in collaboration with the Bharatiya Janata Party and the Nationalist Congress Party. Other prominent parties include the Shiv Sena Uddha Balasaheb Thakare faction and the International Congress, which has been playing a significant role in the politics of the state, besides the Bahujan Samaj Party and the left parties, which participate in the polling process. During the 2019 general elections in the state, of the total 48 seats, the BJP won 23, the undivided Shiv Sena backed 18, the NCP won 4, while the INC, AIMIM and Independents won one seat each. Amidst a supercharged political scenario in the state, which has been witnessing the rise of new political factions and collaborative realignments, all eyes are on Maharashtra this polling season. As it prepares to undergo the test of India's populist mandate in the general elections. Election desk, DD India. Well, Maharashtra going to the poll in five phases, only... Along with Maharashtra, it's only Jammu and Kashmir that goes to poll in five phases. So it's an interesting a battle, especially two voting or two, uh, the first and second phase, two phases in April, three phases in the month of May. It's a jam-packed hot summer for the people of Maharashtra, the political parties, the political players there in the middle. Let's quickly understand why Maharashtra is important in the 2024 elections. Well, Maharashtra, when one takes a look at it, uh, purely from a perspective, it's the most industrialized nation in, or most industrialized state of India. Remember, 35% of auto components and auto auxiliary units come from this state, so it's an important, crucial year, crucial state for uh, India. Mumbai is India's uh, fine, uh, financial and commercial capital. The stock markets, 
and also the way the stock markets, both the Bombay Stock Exchange as well as the National Stock Exchange, it's the single largest contributor to Indian economy, close to 15% of India's GDP comes from this particular state. Finally, the showbiz industry, the Bollywood, the Hindi cinema industry is in Mumbai, the capital of Maharashtra, and that's why Maharashtra matters. A look at the five phases of elections or the state, how it undergoes the five phases of elections. On the 19th, you've got five seats, 26th, you've got eight, 7th and 13th, you've got 11 seats apiece. And on the 20th, the last phase of voting, you've got 13 seats. The big city of Mumbai goes to vote on the 20th of May. That's the last phase of voting in Mumbai. Remember, the results will be out on the 4th of June. Now let's take a look at the voting pattern that we have seen in the last two Lok Sabha and Assembly elections. Uh, this is the Lok Sabha results of 2020, 2014 and 2019. BJP along with the Shiv Sena combined almost grabbing 80% of the seats that were there. 41 seats if one puts the numbers together. 41 seats that the Shiv Sena and the BJP managed to capture in 2014-2019. There is a split in the coalition. Will that change the dynamics in the western state? That's what looking out for. Mar NCP stuck on four. Congress losing ground, winning that lone seat of Chandrapur there in 2019. AIM M making its debut winning that lone seat in Maharashtra. This is the assembly, the assembly results of 2014 and 19. BJP winning 122, losing ground in Maharashtra in 2019. But NCP gaining ground, but there's been a break within the NCP. There are two factions of NCP, two factions of Shiv Sena that you see. Will that change? A lot many things especially, or does that leave the voters confused? It's a maha chaos situation. If one may look at, look at it from the voters' perspective, especially when, it, when one takes a look at Maharashtra. Also, the voting percentage of the two states, you know, both in the Lok Sabha as well as uh, in the Assembly elections. This is the voting percentage during Lok Sabha elections, 2014, 60%, 2019, 61, well below the national average of 67 that we saw in 2019. Are things going to change this time around? The Election Commission leaving no stone unturned. Also, a look at the voting percentage in the assembly elections of 2014 and 19. 63% voting that you saw in 2014 slipped to 61%. Not much of a change, but this time around, you know, there is too much to choose. You know, can Maharashtra be that game changer state with 48 seats there up for grabs? Can Maharashtra be that game changer state, especially when it comes to changing the fortunes of political parties or combinations? You have seen many Agadi is there. So is this state going to be the game changer, especially from a national perspective? The major political forces coming together, that's the NDA, you've got the BJP, you've got the NCP that's led by Sharad Pawar, the Shiv Sena unit, that's Ud uh, Eknath Shinde, the MNS from Raj Thakre's unit and the RSP coming together, that's the block. The seat combination, the seat sharing still going on, but this is the block, the NDA block that's going to fight elections in Maharashtra. Switch over to the opposition camp. That's the opposition block that we are looking at. Congress, Shiv Sena, that's Udav, Bal Thakre's faction, along with Sharad Pawar's faction of the NCP coming together to fight elections in Maharashtra for that 48 seats uh, that the political parties. And uh, also a quick look at the candidates who are going to fight this particular election there. Sunil Mende from uh, Bhanda Bhandara in Gondia taking on Prashant Padole. Uh, MLA now getting you know another role to play as uh, you know, making his debut in the Lok Sabha there and in this Lok Sabha elections Congress fielding him in on the ticket Sanjay Bhaiya from the BSP there completing that Bandara seat. Interestingly two seats are very interesting in this particular phase the Vidarbha phase that you see one is Chandrapur the other is Nagpur. Chandrapur as I was talking about Chandrapur has been since 1952 a seat that Congress has managed to win 11 times. 2019, this was a lone seat that Mar uh, in Maharashtra that Congress managed to win. And uh, this time, the BJP has fielded uh, the state minister. He's been put in the political ring, especially in the Lok Sabha elections, and Sudhir Muktimbar there in the election fray. Gatchiroli, you've got Ashok Nete from the BJP, you've got Kirsan Namdev from the Congress, and you've got another Namdev Rao from the BSP fighting elections, especially in Gatchiroli seat. The big seat that I mentioned, Nagpur that we are looking at, Nitin Gadkari seeking re-election for the third time. You've got Vikas Thakre, an MLA that the, B, that the Congress has promoted to or handed the ticket in this particular election, taking on Nitin Gadkari. Nitin Gadkari is a political heavyweight, especially in Nagpur. And this particular seat uh, 
you know, could be one way. But remember, elections, uh, one cannot predict any of these. It could throw some surprises. Finally, Ram take. This is of the five seats. This is the last seat that goes to polls uh, in that first phase of elections. Mr. Bharve there along with Chahande and Parve completing. This is the seat. The Shiv Sena faction has got, this is the seat that the BJP has given to the Shiv Sena faction to fight in this particular 2024 elections. So it's an interesting contest that we are seeing, especially in Maharashtra, since it goes to poll in all the five phases. It could throw up many surprises as the election progresses, but the Vidarbha region, 10 seats out of which five are going to polls in the first phase, this could throw some more interesting numbers, some interesting challenges that could emerge as we see that first phase of voting completed. Now, you know, elections are all about the election commission trying time and again on getting more and more voters to come and vote. If one takes a look at the 2019 numbers, almost 266 constituencies, 10 states and union territories where the voting percentage was way below the voting average that this nation saw of 67%. What are the steps that the election commission is taking, especially in overcoming or, you know, helping these 266 constituencies, Maharashtra state also is included in that. You know, how does the election commission push or, you know, create awareness for more and more people to come and vote? Let's take a look as Antra Sina gets you the details. Welcome to our new segment, Election Digest. Well, elections really are a litmus test for democracy in action allowing people to actively engage in shaping their government, marking their participation in the crucial decision-making process. With the motto of no voter to be left behind, India's election commission has been the inspiration for many voter awareness campaigns across the country. This week, from the north to the south, from the remotest villages to the bustling cities, some campaigns have caught our eye. In Goda district in India's Jharkhand, Rural women were seen actively participating in an awareness campaign for general elections 2024 through rangoli making, mehendi, rally, and a voter oath. A series of activities were held at Udampo district in India's Union Territory of JNK, encouraging common masses to actively participate in the festival of democracy. In India's western state of Maharashtra, a cycle rally was also organized from Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Chowk to Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Memorial in Karjat. The drone footage captures the essence of the campaign. Down south on the shores of Karnataka's Malpe Beach, cultural programs to create awareness on voting were also held. Students created awareness through dance and through music. Well, that is all from my side. Over to you. Well, well, thank you, Antra, for that quick update, quick wrap on how the Election Commission is uh, egging on people to go out and cast their vote. Now, to get a perspective on the state that we are looking at, Maharashtra, how things could play out in Maharashtra. Two eminents joining us this evening, Aditi Tandon, uh, senior political journalist from the Tribune, joining us here in the studios. We've got uh, another guest joining us. We've got Sailesh Paranjpe, senior journalist, joining us from Mumbai to take this deliberation forward. Let me first come to you, Aditi. You know, looking at Maharashtra and the first phase, Vidarbha region that goes to the polls, do you see it, the way combinations have changed, the way uh, the regional satraps have worked, do you see it as, you know, chaotic elections or a never-before election that Maharashtra and the people of Maharashtra has seen? Yeah, absolutely. I think in the in at least several decades of history, political history of Maharashtra, this will be the first time when two traditional rivals will have to choose sides. Because you see, BJP and Shiv Sena have been traditionally uh, opposing NCP and, um, you know, Congress. Of course, and NCP is splitting. Now, the traditional voters of both the sides, uh, Shiv Sena as well as NCP, you see, having MPs on your side, having MLAs on your side is one thing. We can argue that the BJP-led NDA has maximum number of MLAs, right, True. after the split and maximum number of MPs. But does the traditional voter base transfer likewise? Mm. That is the challenge for the BJP. 
and Maharashtra's importance in this particular uh, election season will be that nothing that will happen this time has been ever tried and tested. True. This is the first time. So it is a cracker of an election. I agree with you totally. Well, a cracker of an election. Let's get the voice from the ground. You know, Selesh Paranjpe joining us. Uh, Mr. Paranjpe, you know, what's the sense that you get? You know, an election battle that could throw many surprises, purely not, not in terms of the number game, but in terms of how, you know, many parties have changed, especially the way they approach elections and also the combinations that have come together. Uh, what I will uh, point out is, uh, entire country we have been witnessing uh, uh, polls and predictions by experts, political pundits and all of them. But for the first time in history of Maharashtra, as uh, rightly pointed out by another expert, that both the parties like Shiv Sena as well as NCP, which are essentially regional parties, uh, having uh, diametrically opposite ideologies, have been uh, split before the elections. And now, Sharad Pawar, who is the strongman of Maharashtra and knows almost uh, every inch of land of uh, this state, now his party is split into two. Uh, Balasaheb Thakre or Shiv Sena, which was a formidable force for years in Bombay as well as Maharashtra. Now his party all, is all already into two pieces. Now it is very interesting because uh, the current chief minister, Iknath Shinde and Uddhav Thakre, both of them now are facing as to how much strength really they enjoy when it comes to masses. Okay. And that will be tested for the first time for Ajit Pawar, as well as Sharad Pawar, as well as for Uddhav Thakre and Eknath Shinde. That is how it is really becoming complex to predict Maharashtra polls. But uh, one thing is sure, even though number of elected representatives, that is MLAs and MPs are with NDA camp, now it will be on the ground that the strategy on the part of uh, the leadership, central leadership uh, from BJP is adding to the vote base. Uh, consistently, last 20 years, they are adding to their vote base. And now the same thing is happening for the NDA. Okay. Uh, as far as Vidarbha is concerned, we are, uh, Vidarbha is having the history of being bastion of Congress for long because of the demographic uh, peculiarities. But because of uh, leaders like Nitin Gadkari as well as Devendra Padanvis and Sudhir Mungandiwar, who is contesting from Chandrapur, uh, which will be an interesting battle. Uh, the uh, battle for Vidarbha will be uh, very interesting and uh, at, I, I don't think there will be uh, many surprises here as you are saying. But uh, as far as uh, complexity of the elections are concerned, Maharashtra will be the most complex state to predict. Okay. At it's, least for now. Okay, it's going to, it's going to leave uh, many an experts and many a political pundits guessing on what exactly could be happening when those EVM machines will be opened on the 4th of June. Aditya, a quick thought from you, you know, looking at how these elections will be played out. Do you see Maharashtra as a state where we have, see, where we have seen a season of hard bargains? Yeah, I think, uh, see, uh, Maharashtra is key to both sides uh, tilting the equations in either's favor. Yeah. For instance, you look at the BJP. Why is the BJP so uh, aggressively campaigning and, you know, engineering all these defections also now, a lot of defections from the India bloc towards the NDA bloc? Because Central and North India BJP saturated okay. in the 2019 Lok Sabha elections. Now, to reach the 400 plus target, which Prime Minister Narendra Modi has set for the ruling NDA alliance, where do you get the seats? Maharashtra is a key state, as you yourself said in the opening, that it's the second um, uh, biggest state after Uttar Pradesh, 80 seats in Uttar Pradesh, 48 seats here. Now, if you look at the data, if you just do a cursory look at the data, uh, at least 10% of the seats which the NDA won in 2014 and in 2019 came from Maharashtra. Mm -hmm. So it is that important to the NDA equation. And that explains why Prime Minister is going to Chandrapur. You True. said that's the only seat Congress actually won last time. So the Prime Minister will launch BJP's campaign from the seat, the only seat that the Congress won. And you see, this is a very interesting phase uh, because what is happening is uh, the Vanchit Bahujan Aghari, mm -hmm has not uh, had any kind of success in talks with the M MVA. True. And you also just said that uh, although uh, 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 this Prakash um, Ambedkar is supporting Vikas Thakre opposite Nitin Gadkari in Nagpur, hmm. he has actually fielded candidates. 
So where is uh, MVA? Where is their political strategy? This mm -hmm. is not looking good for them. Right now, it is looking advantage BJP. Okay. Uh, you know, Shailesh, when one, you know, when, when one sees this particular election, the way it is played out, do you somewhere get the sense, you know, looking at Maharashtra, that, you know, Maharashtra, the leaders, especially the national leaders, are slowly making a beeline before that first phase. Chandrapur, Ram, take the prime minister is coming. Do you see the political, you know, the political storm that this state is expected to create and the issues that will be there, you know, will resonate with the people, more of local issues, less of national issues that the people will look at when they go to vote? Uh, as far as inter country is concerned, uh, as we know, they are saying Modi, Modi ki guarantee their national issues, whether in North there will be Ayodhya, Ram, Lala Temple, etc. But as far as Maharashtra is concerned, since we have got, already we had four major parties which have been converted into six to seven parties. So, local issues as well as infightings, as well as rift between the leaders and factions, are becoming talk of the town as well as headlines in last eight days than national issues or Modi ki guarantee in Maharashtra. So, in addition to Prime Minister or Rahul and Priyanka Gandhi campaigning, Priyanka Vadra Gandhi campaigning in Maharashtra, there will be a lot more to see as to local level relationships between the leaders, their factions, their rivalries, and their local issues. The point is, Maharashtra, even though we are going for Lok Sabha polls, uh, instead of uh, stability, party symbol, or national leadership, uh, the local rivalries as well as factionalism, as well as people defecting from one party to the other, these will be more important in Maharashtra. And that is how it is becoming complex to predict. Okay. Aditi, you know, we've seen many a moods change in Maharashtra since it's the second largest state uh, that provides most MPs to parliament in that context with a lot of chaos there and with assembly elections due before October in the state, True. does that leave the party, the carder, also the voters, you know, tired looking at the way things have shaped up before they go to cast their vote? Well, um, I would say that the voters as well as the carders could actually be uh, facing an adrenaline rush uh, contrary to fatigue because okay. they don't know where they are going to vote. And this is a new scenario for them. The whole electoral landscape is barren. Everything will be tried and tested for the first time. Let's not forget the only election that has happened after this entire split saga mm. was the bipole, bipole that happened in Chinchwad and uh, Kasbah Pet in 2023. Congress managed to unseat the BJP candidate in Kasbah Pet after three decades. True. But that was the time when Ajit Pawar was still part of uh -huh. the MVA. So that equation has changed. Chinchwad, BJP had retained. So these are the only two uh, test cases we have after the splits. So we don't know anything what's going to happen. Let me but bring in, uh, and since you have another expert from Mumbai, what will happen on the ground with the Maratha quota? Mm. I think it's going to be a big issue, especially at a time when the India bloc is advocating a national level caste census. Congress manifesto came today and they're saying we are going to give a national level caste census, which means a major push to OBC politics. Mm. But what has happened in Maharashtra? Eknath Shinde-led government has passed the Maratha quota bill. Now, where will the, where will the jobs come from? They have, this, this makes the Marathas eligible to actually apply within the 27% quota available for OBCs. This factor, how it plays out on the ground and which, because a lot of caste polarization has happened around this quota agitation also. Mm -hmm. Apart from splits, defections, uh, which we are already discussing and which is in the face, this is the nuanced uh, factor that might actually uh, disturb the apple cart of either side. Well, apple cart of either side could be disturbed, uh, could be shaken. Shailesh, I'll let you have the last word. You know, looking at how this particular election battle, especially for Maharashtra, is shaping up, do you feel there is too much at stake, both for the NDA and the Indie bloc? The simple reason is that last time, as uh, pointed out, NDA had 41 seats, with Shiv Sena 18 and BJP having 23 seats. 41. So, this time also, they are targeting to uh, win between uh, 40 to 45 seats, etc. They are talking about. But the point is, on two points, uh, as far as Maratha reservation uh, agitation is concerned, it will have its impact mainly in Maratha region. Mm. 
Mm. That two uh, in three four constituencies which are uh, which will be affected as per, uh, uh, as a result of Maratha agitation because there is no uh, Maratha reservation issue in Vidarbha or Konkan or Western Maharashtra for that matter. So it will be mainly affecting Maratwada region and Maratwada has eight seats in total Lok Sabha seats. So uh, that point is uh, uh, I think uh, Jaranke Patil already who led the agitation has declared that he will not be contesting election or uh, uh, on the plank of Maratha reservation issue, there will not be any candidate as such. So it will be a, a typically a national battle between two blocks, India and India. But it will have impact in four constituencies in Maratwada, I think. And as far as uh, entire election in Maharashtra is concerned, uh, BJP as it is will be contesting more than uh, seats which it contested last time, that is 25. But again, uh, I don't think that there will be like very interesting election or something because uh, definitely uh, NDA will have age and uh, issues will not be discussed at this time. It will be really on national issues, stability, development, Modi ki guarantee against uh, uh, Rahul and Priyanka will be addressing rallies in Vidarbha also in uh, next week, 15th April and so. Okay. So they'll be uh, talking about that bonds and all those things. Okay. Okay, we'll leave it there. Maharashtra is uh, gearing up for an election like never before. Thank both guests, uh, Aditi Tandan in the studios with Thank us. You. Thank you. Thank a pleasure you. having you here. Also, Sailesh Parajpe joining us from Maharashtra. Well, staying with the Great Indian Election, the Great Indian Election is your one-stop show on weekdays and all that matters in the Indian elections of 2024. What could be the state that could form a part of our deep dive on Monday night? The land of Dravidians, Tamil Nadu, goes to polls in one go. How will the National Party's alliance face the political heat with the regional satraps? What are the issues that could find resonance among the voters as India decides? Will the vote share increase help the National Party's get a foothold in the minds of the people? Watch Why Tamil Nadu Matters on the Great Indian Election at 8.30pm IST and 1500 hours GMT only on TV India. I hope you enjoyed our presentation on the great Indian election. Remember, we are on weekdays, Monday to Friday. We are going to be back again on Monday night with uh, going down south to Tamil Nadu, which goes to poll in uh, one phase. It's time for me to say goodbye. Thanks from my team. Do not forget to join us, same time, same channel, on Monday night at 8.30 p.m. IST and 1500 hours GMT. Until we meet again, enjoy life, stay healthy, have a wonderful weekend ahead.